Hi, this is group six, and we are going to present chapter 18. Basically, in this chapter, we will discuss how development and operations could reduce the risks of production changes even before they are made, as well as how integrating practices into our daily work, such as peer review, pair programming, and cutting bureaucratic approval processes, etc., could increase the quality of our changes and reduce the risk of poor deployment outcomes. But before we start, in order to quickly and reliably deliver features to market with high quality and security, GitHub engineers create and commit code to a distinct branch off of master. When the code is ready for merging or when they need feedback, they open a pull request. After the code is approved, they merge it into master and then it is deployed into production. There is an interesting example described in this section about the Knight Capital Company. It had a huge trading loss caused by a 15 minutes deployment error that impeded the engineers to disable the production services. And according to John Auspol, when this type of incidents occur, it, it is because of changing control or testing failures, where changing control could prevent the problem to be deployed while testing could have canceled the risky deployment. It is interesting because in an environment with low trust and command and control cultures, increase the likelihood of these problems occurring again. But building a high trust culture is what we are going to discuss in this presentation, but I can say that relying less on external changes approvals is one of the first steps. When problems occur after changes are made, we usually add more steps in our changing process approval that will cause more friction to the deployment process. This will result in the increasing batch sizes, deployment lead time, and last quick feedback from our work because more people are involved to approve these changes. Actually, in many organizations, a changing advisory board coordinates and governs the delivery process. Their activities should not include evaluating hundreds of lines of code or even descriptions of the changes. That is why we must rely more on peer review activities and reduce the reliance on external members of the team to authorize the changes. And requiring engineers to get peer review of their changes will help in the process of having fellow engineers close to the work to inspect the changes. We use chat rooms to announce changes to ensure that our changes won't interfere with each other. An advantage of loosely coupled architecture is that we need to coordinate with their teams as much as is needed when we use self, I mean, service oriented architecture. In development, we can ask engineers to get peer reviews of their changes instead of require approval from external body prior to development. The benefits are not only finding errors, but also peer learning and skill improvement. The larger the changes are, the longer it will take and to be reviewed and vice versa. However, Randy Shoup observed nonlinear relationship between the size of changes and potential risk of integrating the change. To achieve all the listed code review guidelines and to ensure that we are not merely rubber stamping reviews, we may also want to inspect the code review statistics to determine the number of proposed changes approved versus not approved and perhaps sample and inspect specific code reviews. Code reviews can facilitate increased code comments and production deployments and support trunk based deployment and continuous delivery at scale. Google enables over 13,000 developers to work off of trunk on a single source code tree, performing over 5,500 code comments per week, resulting in hundreds of production deployments per week. In 2010, there were 20 plus changes being checked into trunk every minute, resulting 50% of the code base being changed every month. Figure 42 shows how code review lead times are affected by the change size. The larger the change submitted for code reviews, the longer the lead time required to get the necessary sign-offs. The more complex and potentially risky changes that required more deliberation and discussion. 
Manual testing is naturally slower and more tedious than automated testing and often has the consequences of taking significantly longer to test. Instead of performing testing on large batches of changes that are scheduled around change freeze periods, we want to fully integrate testing our daily work as part of a smooth and continual flow into production and increase our development frequency. By doing this, we build in quality, which allows us to test, deploy, and release in even smaller batch sizes. Fair programming provides us to work together. It is when two programmers work side by side at one computer, collaborating on the same design, algorithm, code, and test. It is not only for development, everything needs to be enrolled to provide a value stream. We can use different patterns to apply that. For example, when one engineer writes the code and the other one reviews the work as it is performed, he acts as a guide. Another example is when one engineer writes the automated test and the other engineer implements the code. In both examples, pair programming produces a higher quality of code, error-free codes increase, than the produced by the summation of their solitary efforts. Commonly, work in this way inspires the engineers and helps them to enjoy the process. We want to take this case study. The problem was the use of code review processes because the developers took a lot of time to receive code reviews from the senior engineers, who didn't care as much about the fixes, creating a terrible situation. The solution focused on eliminating the delays. Then the process was removed and pair programming implemented, so it ensured that every line of code was inspected by two people. The result was that significantly increases the flow of work into production and they reduce the amount of time required to get
we need to evaluate whether our peer review process is working properly. There are different methods, but I would like to focus on pull request process. It comes from Ryan to Michael, Zion co-founder of HitHoop. He helped us to identify what is a bad pull request and a good pull request. Bad pull request doesn't have enough context for the reader having little or no documentation of what the change is intending to do. Good pull request shows detail on why the change is being made, how the change was made, as well as any identified risks and resulting countermeasures. We have learned the good effects to use peer review and peer programming in our production but there are companies that require extended approvals processes. It affects directly the lead times. Therefore, we need to re-engineer our processes to be quickly and safely, removing obstacles, recognizing the need to provide a quickly value stream to the customer. A lot of people working in that, providing some ideas. For example, the goal is to relentlessly reduce the effort required for engineers to perform work and deliver it to the customer. We learn in this chapter that we must avoid asking an external member group of the team to approve change. Instead, we must rely on peer review. Building a high trust culture among the team members will produce great outcomes. Peer programming produces a higher quality of code. And finally, pull requests are a great way to give and receive feedback on proposed code change.